Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So in case you haven't heard, James Cameron's long anticipated movie Game Changers, the movie about vegan athletes kicking butt, finally has a theater release date for September 16th. And the trailer's been up on YouTube for quite a while for all to see. And apparently anti-vegans have seen it and they're not excited, let's say, about the idea of a movie coming out showing how vegans are not degenerating or deteriorating. No, they're kicking butt and the anti-vegans and carnivores are just going ballistic about it. Particularly, I'm not gonna mention his name, but he's a carnivore former doctor. His last name rhymes with faker. And he's been saying all sorts of nonsense about this on Twitter trying to debunk the movie. So as soon as I read this post, I knew I had to make a response here because pretty much everything that Faker said is 180 degrees opposite of the actual truth and facts of the matter. It's just a bunch of nonsense promoting his anti-plant eating, his eating only meat agenda. And let's start off here with Tim Sheaf because Faker was all too quick to call out Tim Sheaf, who was a recent former vegan who was originally in the original edit of the movie but had to be edited out because Tim quit being vegan. And the reason was, as Faker says here, that the vegan diet wrecked Tim's health. Yeah, it's funny how anti-vegans love to claim vegan diets ruin people's health, but if you look at the opinion of the American Dietetics Association, the largest group of health and nutrition professionals in our country, they clearly state that vegan diets, appropriately planned vegan and vegetarian diets, are appropriate for all stages of the life cycle, and particularly for athletes. But anyone who's followed Tim Shi for a while knows he's done anything but eat a well-balanced, appropriately planned vegan diet like the American Dietetics Association recommends. For instance, he did a lot of extreme fringe woo-woo things like 35-day water fast to drive the toxins out of his body and did long stints eating nothing but raw fruits and vegetables. But probably the worst thing he did for himself, and this has nothing to do with eating plants, and this is probably what causes health problems, was drinking urine, his own urine and the urine of others for several years. On top of that, Tim believed staring into the sun gave one nutrients and benefits as long as you had clean internal organs. I always knew that the more internally healed you are, the more you can stare at the sun. So given all the extreme fringe woo-woo things that Tim was doing, it's completely unfair and untruthful to say that a vegan diet ruined Tim's health. No, Tim was doing all these extreme fringe woo-woo things that affected his health. I've been vegan way longer than Tim has. I'm probably like twice his age and my health isn't ruined and I have healthy blood tests to back it up. I'll link to it in the show notes, put a card up here for you to check out too. So let's move on now next to what Faker said about Kendrick Ferris, Olympic weightlifter. He said Kendrick built all of his strength on eating meat and then after going vegan, he bombed in the Olympics, turning in the worst performance of his career. First of all, let me point out that Kendrick was the only United States male lifter to even qualify to compete at Rio. Where were all the meat eating lifters at? They weren't as good as him. When I made the switch to a plant-based diet, I qualified for my third Olympic team. Oh! I broke two American records. I was like, man, I should have done this a long while ago. So let's actually compare the results of Kendrick's last two Olympics and see if he bombed, like Faker said. So in 2012 London, Kendrick placed eighth and lifted 355 kilograms total in his lifts. In Rio, he placed a little bit lower, far from bombing, he placed 11th, but actually lifted more kilograms, 357 kilograms, far from being the worst performance of his career, like Faker asserts. So how could this be? How could he lift more and place lower? Well, it's because in London, he was lifting as a light heavyweight, and in Rio 2016, he went up in class to middle heavyweight. Next, Faker goes on to say that vegan strongman Patrick Baboumian made all his strength and muscle gains while eating meat. Well, let's see if this is true. Here's a picture of Patrick from 1999, well before he went vegan or vegetarian. 2005, he went vegetarian. 2011, he went vegan. And let's see what Patrick says in his own words about the switch from vegetarian to vegan. I even did better. I even went heavier with my body weight. And I realized that I didn't even have to eat as much as I ate before uh, because my metabolism was uh, getting so much more efficient. I ate the same amount of calories, but I started gaining weight. Um, and I was eating the same amount of protein, but I was getting stronger than I was before. 
So Baboomium has only gotten bigger, stronger, and heavier since going fully vegan, despite what Faker's saying. And Faker now just takes it to a whole new level of low. I mean, for him, it's not new, but he says, Baboomian took a bunch of steroids as a vegan. Like, where are you getting this from, Faker? Are you just pulling this out of your butt? Are you projecting? Don't go around and slander people unless you have some receipts. I've heard people say this about Baboomian forever. There's no evidence that he's taking steroids. People like Faker just love to say this about people who are bigger and stronger than them. And then furthermore, Faker goes on to say that, that Baboomian was nowhere even close to being the world's strongest man, as the vegans claim. No, Baboomian has never said he's the world's strongest man. If you just Google his name, you'll see that he's claimed to be the strongest man in Germany in his particular weight class. Next, Faker proceeds to try to body shame vegan bodybuilder Nimai Delgado, who I know, he lives just a few blocks from me here in Long Beach. He says, Nimai built his muscle as a vegetarian. True, he was born into a vegetarian family, later went vegan. And he says, he's at best only a mid-level physique competitor that would not get on the stage with actual pro-level meat-eating bodybuilders. Well, Nimai's body, I can't believe I'm talking about dudes' bodies, but it's actually good enough to be on the cover here of Muscle and Fitness. Yeah, he looks so depleted, so not good enough. Such nonsense. So just for a moment now, Faker puts the ad hominem slander attacks on hold and tries to get scientific and ecological and he doesn't fare any better. He says the BS about plant-based diet saving the planet is complete garbage. A soy-filled monocrop landscape is an effing disaster. Well, first of all, that assumes that vegans are the primary consumers of soy. I mean, vegans don't necessarily eat soy. I could go months without ever having any soy. It's really not that hard. But let's take a look at an actual report here put out by the United States government and it clearly states that well over 70% of soy grown here is grown to feed animals, livestock animals. So if you really want to avoid Faker, this monocrop soy nightmare that you have, tell people to stop eating meat so they don't have to plant as much freaking soy. He also says planting all this soy is going to lead to a destroyed soil and ecosystem. Hmm. Well, if you actually look at what actual governmental and international organizations say about what's destroying our soil and ecosystem, it's clearly not soy, it's animal agriculture. The leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, water pollution, and habitat destruction. So who are you going to trust? Mr. Faker or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Scientific American, the Environmental Protection Agency, the United Nations, the list goes on. On. Animal agriculture is destroying our ecosystem, not growing tofu for vegans. And let's return back to the position of the American Dietetics Association because they also state that plant-based diets are more environmentally sustainable than diets rich in animal products because they use fewer natural resources and are associated with much less environmental damage. Faker then goes on to assert that it's in no way possible for a vegan to reach his or her true potential as an athlete. I mean, this is just complete nonsense. Where is your science backing this up? Again, you're just pulling crap out of your butt. Let's check out a few vegans here not reaching their true potential, like Patrick Baboomium's record-breaking yolk walk here. Hmm. I mean, it's a freaking world record. Like, what more can you want from someone reaching their true potential? It's a world record. No person has done better than this ever before. And Serena Williams, arguably the most dominant female tennis player ever, with her 23 Grand Slam tiles being a record for the most Grand Slam tournament wins in open era, not reaching her true potential. And bringing it down from the stratosphere of world-class elite athletes to people who don't get paid to train. People like myself who are musicians and YouTubers by trade. At age 51, eight years vegan, I learned how to slam dunk a basketball. And mind you, I wasn't doing this when I was younger and eating meat. A vegan diet will not prevent you from achieving your athletic goals. And Faker concludes his fact challenge post by making an ad hominem attack against the filmmaker James Cameron. So he looks like a skeletal wraith. Well, first of all, let me point out this movie's not about James Cameron. It's about the athletes he portrayed in his movie. Secondly, let's have a look at how James Cameron looks now at age 63. And he looks absolutely fine. Why do people that have perfectly healthy body weights get called skeletal wraiths by these anti-vegan bullies? 
I mean, it's truly pathetic seeing a former recent doctor bully a 63-year-old man. And it's really telling who Faker didn't go after, who he didn't bully. Like the 15 members of the NFL team, the Tennessee Titans, who went vegan last season. They all look fine and strong here. He conveniently didn't want to mention these dudes. Now this video is getting pretty long for me guys, so leave your questions and comments down below, particularly if you're a vegan athlete, share with me what you've been doing, what kinds of experiences, what kinds of gains you may have had, what sport you're into, share all this down below, let's show the whole world that you can be vegan and reach your full potential. So that's it for now guys, like this video, share it, until next time, remember guys, it sure doesn't suck being vegan. Fall into the